What's up, Mets fans? Welcome back to another episode of the Mets Up Podcast, episode number 178. Big things going on in this episode. Spring training interviews, the last of them. Drew Smith and Joey Lucchese coming at you. But before we get going into the interview, got a lot to talk about here. Opening day is coming up. That's the Mets stuff. James, you excited? So excited. This baseball is upon us. We're finally going to get the estimate payoff. You guys are going to see either Mark or I in a tuxedo at the home opener next week, possibly doing some content there. We're going to keep you guys updated on that as we know more, but big week of content. Very excited to get the season going. Yep. We have a season preview episode as well coming out on Wednesday, right before the season starts for opening day. So much stuff coming at you. We're so excited to talk about baseball. We're so excited for you guys to listen to this episode as well. Like we said, Drew Smith, Drew Chains. Coming on the uh, podcast, finally getting a good interview with him, along with Joey Lucchese. Really uh, just awesome interviews, right? Yeah, great interviews. I mean, always just talking to pitching. You guys know that may always make me happy. But Drew Smith was a hell of a guy. Joey Lucchese was too. Two dudes who were like, would love to just like, grab a beer with them. They were just fun to hang out with. Drew Smith had we learned about, talked about Drew Chains. He liked that nickname a lot. Talked about his recovery from injury. Similar stuff with Joey Lucchese. Actually, nicknames and recovery from injury too. Two big yeah. themes of these two pitchers, but two super fun interviews. Yep, so let's go ahead and go to the Drew Smith interview first. Hope you guys enjoy it. What's up, guys? Back with another great interview from the Messed Up Podcast live from beautiful Clover Park and the wonderful Port St. Lucie. We have Drew Smith. You guys know him as Drew Chains. <laughs> Welcome to the show, Drew. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Of course, man. Glad to have you here. We're just, we've are just we been massive fans of yours for a long time. We've loved the way you've like broken out over the last few years this team. So just kind of want to start out something nice and easy. What are your expectations for the squad this year? Uh, I mean, I, I feel like we're... We're supposed to be pretty good, so yeah. <laughs> expectations are high, um, but we're all excited. We're ready. Uh, I, I love the moves we made. We made uh, some big-time moves, even some smaller moves that really helped the team out, and uh, I'm excited to get going, and I think it's going to be a great year. As a player, part of the organization, how does it feel when you see ownership and management bring in these big-name players to help you guys win? I mean, it makes you excited. Uh, that's what you want as a you know, owner of a team is to spend money like that, get guys coming in and, and that want to be a part of the team and the organization. And that's exactly what Steve Cohen did. So uh, it get, gets you excited, gets you ready. And uh, it, it just, man, it, it's, it's a lot different than what it was when I first came up for sure. Yeah. So uh, it's, it's an exciting time to be a Met for sure. Zooming out a little bit, talking more about your career. The last few years, you've broken out in a big way. And before that, you basically had two years where you're battling injuries, really trying to like make a place, get your foothold in the league. What what kept you going past then, and what was the biggest difference maker that brought you to this breakout in the last few seasons? Um, I mean, I still struggle with injuries the past two years too, unfortunately. But uh, I think just being on the field for a, a little bit longer than the previous two years really helped. And uh, Hef coming in really helped. He had a, a little more of an analytical viewpoint on on things, pitching from the pitching perspective. So both of those things helped. And uh, even some of the veterans, like bringing in Adovino, picking his brain a little bit. He's been around a long time. Uh, he's been a good uh, mentor for me. And just trusting my stuff more. I, I knew I had a good fastball coming up in the, in the league and um, just not getting too, too overconfident with it, but at the same time using my good slider and, and all my pitches. And I think that was a big thing is, is uh, just being a little more mixed and, and being confident with my stuff. Growing up, who are some of the pitchers that you idolized or looked up to? That's that's a good question, and one that uh, we talk. I've talked about it in the locker room a couple times. With so Tommy Hunter was a Rangers guy when I was a diehard Rangers fan growing up. I grew up in Texas, and uh, I think I was probably 12, 12 ish when he broke out in the league with the Rangers. He was young, maybe low twenties, twenty one, twenty two, and Buck was the manager of the Rangers. <laughs> so I I was a big Tommy Hunter fan. They called him. Tommy Big Game Hunter back Makes then. Sense. He was a starter. <laughs> and uh, I, I love Tommy Hunter. I was a big Colby Lewis fan, too. Oh, wow. You know that name. Oh, so, yeah, that was Some under-the-radar guys, but I was a diehard Rangers guy. So those guys were were uh, were big. I was big fans of them, for sure. Derek Holland. So, of course. And then, obviously, Nolan Ryan. But he was yeah. before my time. But just being a Rangers fan, he's, he's stuck, stuck with me for a while. Talk about growing up in Texas. I know you're a big Cowboys fan. I am. What's it like being a Cowboys fan living in New York? Uh, I hear about it every every year from some <laughs> some Mets fans that are Giants fans or Jets fans, but uh, usually they're they're somewhat nice to me, so that's good. But I I can't really say anything back because we haven't been that great, <laughs> so I have no success to uh, to back up my Cowboys fan claim. So this year we won a playoff game, so that's yeah, a start. Huge, yeah, awesome. Start, you know, Be Tom Brady, like 
be Tom Brady, ended his career. That's what I tell people, he ended <laughs> Tom Brady's career. So that's one, I mean, hang your hat on something. That's it, I guess. But uh, it's, it's, a, it's a good time to be a Cowboys fan, I think. And hopefully in the future, it'll get better. Outside of playing baseball and watching football, what do you like to do in your free time? Man, I like anything outdoors. So uh, actually in spring training, I've, I've been like paddle boarding every day. Ooh, Once we sweet. leave here, I, I just want to be outside in the sunlight. Um, but I like anything, any sports, golf, play golf in the off season, not much in season because I'm already hurt enough and I don't need a, <laughs> I don't need a back tweak trying to hit a ball 300 yards, you know. Uh, I love pickleball. Pickleball is oh, fun yeah. coming up, tennis. Um, and that's, I mean, really anything outdoors, hanging out with friends, just, just spending some quality time is, is what I look forward to in the off season. Playing off that a little bit, if you weren't playing baseball, what do you think you'd be doing? That's a great question. Uh, I would like to say another sport, but I don't. I don't think I'm talented enough <laughs> yeah. for, a, for another sport. With so, the time, maybe. Uh, I wanted to go to school for engineering, wow. um, yeah. but the college I went to didn't have it, so I had to switch my major. But if I didn't play baseball, I would have gone to a different school, probably majored in, in like civil engineering or something like that, and cool. probably done that. You heard us in the intro call you Drew Chains because yeah. you're rocking the chain. We like yeah. to give nicknames yeah. to guys. What do you think about the nickname and? Is there a nickname that the guys on the team call you instead? Uh, I have a, I have a couple. Uh, <laughs> one of the trainers calls me Drew Baby, uh, Drewzy, um, stuff like that. But I like Drew chains. That's a good one. I, I, I used to have a like a silver chain, and then I think it was two off seasons ago. I was like, I need a gold chain, so I just got a gold chain, and then it pops out when I pitch sometimes. With the black jersey so, too. Uh, black yeah, jersey it looks great. It looks good. <laughs> So I like it. I like the nickname. That's good. Keep it going. It's kind of funny because two years ago when we started doing this show, you had the long hair back then. I did, yeah. We actually then called you Drew Flo. Yeah, okay. And then, you, and then you cut the hair. We were like, oh, my God, we need, Drew, name. We need Drew, a new nickname. Drew Chains. We need the name back. I like Drew Chains better. Drew Flo, uh, it was a good run. Yeah. But it was yeah. not my – it wasn't my look. Yeah, it wasn't my look. That. Yeah, yeah, no one you know. It wasn't my look. What's your favorite pitch to throw? It has to be fastball. Um, it's a good reliever answer. It's a, like, you know, <laughs> if you beat somebody with your heater, it's just like, I, I got you. Like yeah, yeah. you can't you can't touch my heater, so uh, that's definitely the best my, my favorite one to throw. Uh, but there's also a good slider like down and away that looks like a heater to the last second, and the guy that just looks dumb on is also high up there. But I would say heater. Well, um, in your experiences so far in the major leagues, who's been like the toughest out you face? Like who's the peskiest, most annoying? Either you don't want to face, not even don't want to face, because we know you can face them all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But who's been who's been the toughest out? Um, it's it's got to be Juan Soto, I think. You're gonna answer. I yes. think I've got him out once. I think he. I don't. I haven't faced him much because usually we have a lefty come in to face him, or, or I don't face that part of the order because there's a couple of lefties. But um, I think he might be two for three off me, but no homers, so you know, it's it's all right. But yeah. it's, he's just pesky because you'll throw a really good pitch, and he just like lays off it, and he knows he's gonna lay off it from the moment it leaves your hand, like a ball. <laughs> I'm like, how do you how do you know that? Like, that's a strike the ball until you know 58 feet. But it's impressive what he does and. He's definitely one of the tougher guys to face. How does it feel as a pitcher, Juan Soto or other hitters, when they get like very like bodacious in the box? Uh, I, tr I mean, you try not to notice that stuff. It's, but they're definitely doing it to try to you know establish their dominance. Yeah. But yeah. if you can, if you beat them, like you, you do something. I don't do it, but you <laughs> do something back. You know, give them the shuffle back. But I haven't yet. I've yet to do that, and I probably won't because the next time baseball knows, and you'll probably get a home run off you. So. <laughs> I'll just keep it, I'll keep it casual, but that's, uh, I mean, he can do what he wants. He's a good hitter, so. Incredible. Yeah. Last, last year, you were part of the combined no-hitter. What was that feeling to be a part of Mets history like? Uh, it was awesome, and I'll be completely honest. I had no idea that it was a no-hitter until the eighth inning. So I threw my four outs or whatever, and I was coming off the mound, and the crowd was, like, going nuts. And I was like, I mean, I, I thought I pitched pretty good, but I was like, man, <laughs> they're, they're, really, they're really feeling it today. Get in the clubhouse, do my arm care. Lugo gets done and comes in, and we're both watching it, and then we hear it on the thing. Like, that's, you know, continuing the no-hitter, and we both look at each other like, did you know that? He's like, I had no idea. <laughs> so we run back outside, and we watch the last two innings from the dugout, and uh, it was awesome. Unreal experience. It was my first no-hitter combined or anything in, in baseball, even going back to high school, little wow. league. So it was, really, it was really cool for sure. What's that feeling like, the camaraderie, when you go, like, you and your guys, like, Combined on a no-hitter? Uh, I, I personally like it better than a just a single-person no-hitter because it takes it took five guys. And for one guy to be on their stuff 
you know, it, it can happen. But for five guys to consistently come in and everybody be on their game, I, I don't want to say it's harder, but it's. I think it's more rare. I don't know if there's been more combined no hitters than reg. I think there's been less combined yeah, no hitters. Yeah, I think there probably have been yeah. like like just data wise combined. Less. It's just tough for five guys to come in and everybody be on their game, and and we did that, and it was a it was an incredible experience. Edwin Diaz was a part of the no hitter. Yeah. Obviously, resigned this past year. Yeah. Saw on Instagram when he made his like end of the year post. Yeah. <laughs> he said if he comes back, you're giving him a hundred dollars. I have yet to give him a hundred bucks. Yet. Yeah, I need good. to do it. I'll video it. I'll post it on <laughs> social media or something so everybody gets off my back. Because right when he signed, I had a bunch of comments or something. Pay, pay Edwin Diaz his money. I was like, you're right. I did. Pay. He's doing all right too. Yeah, he's he's not, doing okay. He did, yeah. I don't know if he needs the hundred bucks, but I'll give it to him. I'm a man of my words, so I'll give it to him. Absolutely, sure. love to hear that. Uh, yeah. Big rule change coming this year. It's going to affect all pitchers. The pitch clock. Have yep. you had any experience with the minor leagues? I don't think you have, but just going to ask. But what do you think is going to be the impact on the game? I haven't had any experience with it. I think it's going to be a learning curve for the first month or so. Um, there's Luckily, I think we looked at some times last year. I think I'm right around 15 seconds with nobody on base. So I, I'm going to cut it down by a second just to be sure. Um, and I think with runners on, I might have to cut it down by a second or two. But the disengagements of stepping off the rubber and only being able to pick a couple times, I think, is, is going to be interesting because then you'll have that cat and mouse game. If you've already done it twice, maybe the guy on first is you know, kind of creeping, and then you you got to decide if you want to pick him off. And if you, if you don't, he gets second. So yeah. it's going to be interesting. Um, I think it's it's good for the game just to get something new in and, and see how it goes, and, and we'll see if it's a positive change. Last year, Sports Illustrated models came to the game. <laughs> you shot your shot on Twitter to yeah. Cindy Kimberly. I did. Did, I did. It, did it work? Did you nothing, get a date? Nothing happened. Oh. Nothing happened from it. I uh, I didn't follow up. So I was, uh, I don't know if I was scared, but like I just <laughs> got busy and then saw she was like already dating some soccer players. So I was like, I'll probably, I'll back off that. <laughs> I don't know. Baseball over we'll soccer. See. We know that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. Mets fans came out to your. They did. Uh, that was together. awesome. Thank you guys. I appreciate it. <laughs> Didn't work, but I appreciate your support, <laughs> for sure. You're definitely one to snap your dressers on the team. You take yourself out of the equation. Who do you think is best dressed in the clubhouse? There's a couple. Um, Mark Canna. Okay. Wow. Great dresser. You. Great great dresser. Um, Pete, great dresser. Francisco Lindor. Yeah. Those are three. I would say those are my top three, for sure. Um, and then I don't even think, I don't even think I'm top ten, but I appreciate yeah. the yeah, compliment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do. I had a, a decent picture the other day walking in. Everybody's like, "Oh, you dress nice." It's like it was one day. <laughs> that was definitely most of the day. I'm in like joggers and a t-shirt or something. But, but yeah, I would say those three are my top. All right. Thanks again, Drew, for coming on with yeah. us. Appreciate you being here. Perfect. Thank you, everybody. See you next time. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. So there was Drew Smith, Drew Chains, or Drew Boo, as we now know. Wants to be an engineer if he wasn't going to be a major league baseball player. Don't think he has to worry about that too much. Awesome interview as always. Joey Lucchese up next. I mean, it's it's also funny for us to like be talking about this now. It's been a couple, it's been almost a month now since we've done these interviews, but it's it's interesting to hear back and like remember exactly what's being said. Yeah, and just remember that it even happened. Like, hey, we just hung out with Joe Lucchese. We talked about it, just talk some pitching, talk some rehab, talk some expectations. Really cool. So here it is, Joey Lucchese. What's up, guys? Welcome back to the Mets Sub Podcast. We have another great interview coming to you live from Port St. Lucie. Joey Lucchese, sitting down with us for a couple minutes. Joey, first question. You have probably one of the coolest nicknames in the entire team, Joey Fuego. Can you tell us where that originated from? Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, <laughs> I went to college in Southeast Missouri University, Okay. Yeah. a little city called Cape Girardeau. Played there in college ball. <clears throat> My first baseman, Ryan Rippey, wanted me to make a Twitter because he thought I was like hilarious guy, just made jokes and he wanted me to have a cool nickname, but I, I couldn't think of one. And on the bus, he, he thought of naming me Joey Fuego. And I was like, oh, man, that's kind of sick. And then um, <laughs> kind of just stuck, and a couple of teammates heard about it And because Ryan kept calling me in the locker room, and then my coaches heard it, and they started calling me. I was like, oh, wow, my coaches like it. So I just stuck, and yeah. then um, that was my Twitter handle. Then it became my Instagram handle. That, that's how it started, yeah. Of course, we're talking to Joey Lucchese. we got to talk about the Churve. How did that pitch even come about? I had got drafted by the Padres in 2016. Following year in 2017, I didn't have the chur for a year, but um, I was trying to learn how to throw a regular changeup. Okay. But I, I, for some reason, I can't pronate the pitch, so I was I was throwing like a curveball, and, and you know how you hold a changeup yeah, with three yeah. fingers. Um, and my buddy Eric Lauer, who's now in the Brewers, I was playing catch with him in high A, and he's like, "Dude, that's not a changeup." 
that's something else. And then uh, we're thinking of a name for it. And then Churf came out of nowhere and it was, and it just stuck. I don't know, it just kind of blew up. And then people were like interviewing me and asked me all about it. And I loved it. And I, I just love that I'm the only guy who has a Churf. That's yeah. super cool. So, yeah. so is the grip why you guys do this? <clears throat> like the, the celebration for it? Yeah. Yeah, that's so cool. I hold it like this. Yeah. And of course, I'm like gripping it, but yeah. yeah, that's basically how I grip the ball. Different, different part of the ball though. The seams. Yeah. I'm on the seams. I don't have a ball. Yeah. But uh, yeah, when we when I was in 21, they threw it up, and that's a surf sign. Yeah. That's funny. So you got in the mound during the intra squad game, first game action since 21. How did it just feel to get back out there, like in the competitive setting? I ended like 22 innings last year. But that this felt different. Like you know, I felt yeah. like more put together. My arm felt good, and a lot of adrenaline. Like all the, all the guys, yeah. the watching me, coaches. I felt like like little nerves, but good nerves. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I was also anxious, but I was like, man, I've I've done this before. Just let it let it ride, dude. I felt I felt good. Honestly, I felt loose. I felt like obviously I could like use some more reps. Like yeah. Be more precise, but I, I was happy about that outing. Like, yeah, it was good. Healthy too. I feel feeling healthy, so it's okay. good to get out there again. Is there anything you're working on in spring training right now to you know get you particularly ready for the season? So I worked out at Cressy Sports Performance mm-hmm. over here in Jupiter. They got me right. Shout shout out to them, and I got a pretty solid like routine. Mm-hmm. Eric Cressy, Sh- Shane Rye, and like helped me like create a program coming into spring and I do that every day like activation stuff it's really coming along um right now I'm just trying to get on a consistent five-day schedule and once I have that I already have like all the tools and that like stretches I need to do just need to fit them in the right spot so I just I would just say repetition man we heard an interview that you did earlier this week talking specifically about you're trying to focus on agility in these new workouts how do you think that Gonna help your game. Uh, I kind of meant like more explosive, yeah, pl- explosiveness, like working on my breathing type work. Like before, I would just lift super heavy and yeah. just like let's get yoked, you know. <laughs> but now it's just like single leg, single arm. Like mm. let's be loose, but like strong and just explosive because I'm a pitcher. And I need to let let the ball eat, and, you know. Yeah. And I got to do it every so often, a couple of days. So that's how I kind of go about it now turning a little bit smarter. So I've been working on a cutter, tinkering with it a little bit. What led you to adding that to your repertoire? So I had a cutter in 19. I didn't really know when to use it. Okay. And I kind of just threw it. Like, I, I'm not trying to talk myself up, but like, <laughs> I, I feel like I have pretty good precision on my pitches. Mm-hmm. Like, I know where to start it. I would throw it to lefties. It didn't, it didn't really work well against lefties because it stays in the zone longer. Yeah. I, I like throwing it righties more, and I just know where to set it like the perfect spot to set it up, what counts to throw it, and yeah. What are some expectations or goals you have for yourself this season? Goals, stay healthy all year, be with the big league team, win a championship with the team, help contribute. I think those are pretty pretty strong. Yeah, those, those are pretty, are pretty solid pretty goals. Good, yeah. Those are awesome goals, yeah. I have like a bunch of mini goals, but that that's, like I want to throw like 92, 95, but I want to be healthy, man. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and help contribute most of all. Of course. Love that. What do you like to do outside of baseball? Outside of baseball, every Saturday I would go swimming. Okay. Yeah, I like swimming. I game here and that. What do you play? Fortnite, Call of Duty. I used to play 2K a lot. Yeah. I don't really go out much anymore. When I was younger, I used to, like, go out, but I'm just, like, super dedicated to baseball. So just on that. Maybe I'll go shopping, go out dinners with friends or something like yeah. that. Talking about being dedicated to baseball. If you weren't a baseball player, what do you think you'd be doing with your life? Maybe I'd be a coach. Hmm. Maybe I'd work with my dad. He's like, yeah, I don't know. He's an engineer, but I don't know how I would, that would work out. <laughs> yeah, it seems but, so, um, hard. <laughs> yeah, you know, you say you could do that, but you just don't know how it would pan out. Um, and I'm sure it's hard, too, because you're like, well, I've just like been really good at baseball. So Yeah. yeah. <laughs> kind of never been the thing. <laughs> to be honest with you, it's the only job I've ever had in my life. It's pretty cool. But I, awesome. Just put all my focus in that to 
make sure like I get it, you know. 100%. And I'm still here, so. We know the game is about to start here. We're at Port St. Lucie talking with Joey Lucchese. Joey, thank you so much for taking time out of your day, and uh, we hope to see you soon. Thank you, guys. All right, guys, there they are. The Joey Lucchese interview done. Weirdly enough, both thought they could be engineers if they weren't going to be baseball players, which, I, honestly, I don't think that was on my bingo card. No, definitely not. We heard Tyler McGill and Dave Peterson say golf. I kind of felt like that was going to be like, most of the way here. But, you know, anything, they could be anything. I think Drew Smith or Joey Lucchese could be a hell of an engineer. Oh, 100%. So, I mean, great interviews as always. Like we said, guys, season preview episode coming out on Wednesday, right before the season starts, right before opening day. We can't wait for you guys to listen along with us on that, as well as the estimate should be coming to an end. We're going to be doing the decathlon this week. So we will figure out who gets to wear a tuxedo to opening day. We all know it's going to be James. Uh, it's definitely not going to be me. I've, I've been... I've been doing my hot girl walks. You know, I'm in better shape than you've ever seen me in the last two years. So maybe maybe those hot girl walks are going to help me. I don't know what – we haven't been told exactly what our challenges or what our events are going to be. I'm hoping not too much running because James will definitely crush me in that one. I think it's going to have to be a spread of – athleticism versus baseball because we're going to probably each win the ones of those most likely yeah. so it's kind of hopefully you even it out so we have a couple chances to or at least like a couple athleticism a couple baseball and a couple just like random things that we can that we can do see who gets the better of the other make sure you guys are following us on all our social media at Mets up on instagram twitter tiktok uh, the youtube channel going to be on the new york mets youtube channel we're going to be posting all day during Estimate Decathlon Day. There's going to be a little special guest there, too. We'll let you guys find that out on the social media, so make sure you are following us there at MetsUp. If you're listening to us, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Odyssey, drop us a rating, drop us a review, download, and subscribe. Uh, follow James on Twitter at... James underscore Shiano. And me at Giraffe Neck Mark with a C. Thank you guys so much for listening. We'll catch you on Wednesday for the season preview. Let's go Mets. Bye.